Paul. Yeah, no, hey, thanks for thanks for being here. Um, we're excited about the start of our fall training and just continuing to build the team and and our team chemistry and just tighten that inner circle and it's been uh, it's been an awesome first you know month uh, with a lot of uh, classroom sessions and a lot of small group activity and some uh, some we haven't really got into some uh, extensive team type activity until yesterday where we could really inter squad and you know do a little bit more baseball uh, baseball training baseball game type play but uh, it's been great so far the the guys are uh, bringing a ton of energy and uh, you know really really pleased with just the progress we've made in a month uh, but you know this is just the beginning of this journey and uh, you know, we have the highest of expectations, as everybody knows, and so we still have a lot of growth in a lot of areas. Uh, still evaluating the the team and each individual players, and they're still getting familiarized with, you know, maybe the the training format and the the tempo with which things go. But it's been all good, all positive so far, and just excited to keep going because it's more opportunity for growth, more opportunity to improve. Uh, and just continuing to, to build these relationships with these players and them with each other and and really just, you know, become a, a very, very close-knit team. I have, I could be wrong. Somebody said maybe you're making a little change, making some guys earn some things, access to the club, <laughs> different things. What's that about and what's kind of behind it? Yeah, so, you know, we have a, a shared language, shared mentality inside of this program and one of the shared language uh, one of the part of the shared language is we get what we earn and uh, you know it's it's it speaks to a little bit bigger of a picture of you know student athletes uh, in general and in, in today's world um, you know they get a lot they get they're very fortunate uh, at these premier institutions like Clemson uh, to have everything that they have and one of those things that as you know as parents or as coaches that you know, you may fight is a little bit of a sense of entitlement. And so we just want them to appreciate everything that they have here because they have so much and they do appreciate it. But we uh, we don't move into the locker room right away with, you know, a bunch of gear hanging in the lockers and a bunch of shoe boxes stacked up. Those are things they get to earn as they remove the target maybe from themselves and start to put it on other people. We had a great community service event here last Sunday and we'll continue to do some community service activities where we get to engage in the community and and serve other people and um, you know those are all ways to earn more gear and earn more of our cool stuff but also just appreciate the things that we do have. Obviously you some, lost some players from, from last year's squad, uh, Max Wagner was a big one but as, as you begin to piece together your, your roster how much competition is there all over the field particularly with the pitching staff and um, including the incoming freshmen? Yeah, a lot of competition, a lot of a lot of depth from what it looks like early on. I mean, you know, how do you replace the ACC Player of the Year and a guy like Max Wagner, who's just, you know, such a stud? Uh, but he he emerged and he became Max Wagner kind of in the second half of the season, and that's kind of what you hope to uh, to simulate is just that idea of continual growth and improvement. And I think I read a stat that he had eight or nine home runs halfway through the season last year and then ended up with 27 and became the ACC Player of the Year. So uh, the message in there is that it's all about growth, it's all about improvement, it's all about competing and doing it one pitch, one game, one day at a time and just seeing you know these guys learning from a guy like Max Wagner that just keeping that target on keep and continuing to improve and uh, it can accelerate uh, a player, it can ex certainly accelerate a team. Kind of piggybacking off of David's question, is the culture inside the program something you thought needed changing when you got here? No, Clemson baseball is Clemson baseball. I think culture is such a buzzword um, in, in college sports today. Culture is something that happens over a long period of time. I think what we can do as a coaching staff is create an environment every single day, an environment that's very structured and very disciplined, that's focused on a high level of compete and high energy and uh, just bringing a, a very high level of, of intensity. And the classroom curriculum, those things about character traits and leadership and servant behaviors, uh, those things coupled with the environment that we're creating over time will create this culture. But 
the culture of Clemson baseball, did, you know, that's that's been set and and that's been, you know, like bedrock for a long, long time. And yeah, we may have had a, a little dip there, but um, you know, the the environment that we're going to create on a daily basis, the players uh, having the mindset on growth and improvement, um, that will that will all lead to uh, a compound effect over time of restoring this program back to where it belongs, competing for championships and trips to Omaha. I guess players like Riley and Willie, um, obviously we're at Michigan, come here to Clemson. What do they add in terms of, I guess, already an understanding of your culture and how things go and being able to help the players that way? Yeah, it's, it's great to have some, some players who are very well versed in just the day-to-day -day activities, how, how the training environment is structured, the pace and speed with which things move and transition from segment to segment. Uh, it's great to have those guys on board and be a sounding board for the other players. Uh, the intangible that they bring is experience. You know, they've they've played in in the College World Series for a national championship. They've both played in three regionals. They, you know, they both bring much like uh, like Tyler Corbett and Ben Blackwell uh, and others who haven't necessarily been here for all of the years of their senior year till they get to their senior year. They they just bring experience having at bats or innings pitched inside of college baseball. They've had more birthdays and just that experience will, you know, lead to allow them to slow the game down uh, in big moments. Uh, but but Willie and Riley in particular, their postseason experience is certainly an X factor um, that I know they've talked about with some of the other players and um, you know they just they're able to you know to explain some things and you know maybe why we do some of the th things we do and the way we do it uh, but they're learning too i mean they're learning clemson they're learning clemson baseball they're learning this university this town and it's new for them as well so it's also uh, very much an adjustment for them but uh, they've been a, a great addition to to a team that's uh, very talented just on paper and from first month's eyeballs test, it's a, it's a good looking group. I was on the phone with a big time Clemson fan on the way here. He said it's hard to believe it's been 12 years, you know, since the Super, since a College World Series birth at Clemson. Is that hard for you to get your mind around that this program, it, it's kind of been that bit of a drought? And is that the goal, or what kind of goal do you have to set to where you do reach those heights? Sure. Well, you know, when it comes to goal setting, you, you have to know where you want to go. You have to know the destination, but you can't focus on the destination. Just like you can't, you can't say that you're going to ace a test without putting in the preparation of, of studying and doing all the things that it takes to ace the exam. You can't say go to Omaha, win a national championship without reducing that down to every day is very important for growth and development and improvement. Uh, so Omaha is the standard for Clemson baseball, has always been the standard for Clemson baseball. And I think the last 12 years speak more to the parity inside of college baseball. There's a lot of good teams. I mean, Michigan was in Omaha. That hasn't happened since the 80s. And um, so it's just it, there's a lot of teams that are that are recruiting hard and developing their players well. Everybody's utilizing uh, the latest technology and, and systems to help with their accelerate their player development uh, so it's a more competitive environment uh, but this is Clemson and Clemson baseball should compete for ACC championships and should compete for trips to the World Series uh, and so in order to get there that had, didn't happen till June uh, and that's how important September 30th is and every day we have moving forward it's a, it's a important opportunity to to get better and develop as a team. How, How do you, you kind of see Caden Grice's role and what do you want to see for him this fall? Yeah, Caden wants to be a two-way player. He wants to pitch. Um, you know, he's playing a lot of first base right now, but he's been throwing his bullpens with Coach Bellinger and doing a fantastic job. I, I truly see him as a, as a, a prominent two-way player in college baseball this year. Speaking of Coach Bellinger, you brought him in uh, to coach your pitchers from Florida State. Why him? I've always been a big fan of Jimmy Bellinger. Um, you know, he tells a funny story. I don't remember this, but he was a, a coach at Monmouth University and wasn't old enough to rent a car. And so was bumming rides. He's a 24-year-old assistant coach, a pitching coach. And so he just hit me up in the parking lot and asked me for a ride to the next uh, recruiting event, you know, one field to the next field. And, uh, you know, I said, sure, yeah, come on. And uh, 
but he and I have just, you know, st had had a connection in one way or another. Um, good friends with Dan McDonald at Louisville, and Jimmy played for Coach Mac, uh, went to the World Series with them back in 07. Uh, and then Jimmy was part of the staff that took over at Maryland after I'd left Maryland to go to Michigan. So I had a close eye on their program and just saw the development of the pitchers at Maryland and what he did to help them reach another level and get to two super regionals at Maryland, which, you know, at the time was just unprecedented. Uh, and then goes to Kentucky and they're in a super regional right away and uh, developing first rounders like Zach Thompson. And then he goes to Florida State and, you know, they've got three of their guys in their pitching rotation this year that were at on Team USA this past summer. So it's it's a proven track record of of development. But the thing I like the most is just always this feeling of this relentless attack on the strike zone and always this feeling even playing against his teams when Maryland and Michigan were in the Big Ten together just this uncomfortable feeling when you're facing their pitchers and just the the mound presence and the compete and the way they attack and now seeing the structure here over the last month you can see why um, it's it's something that's highly emphasized that compete that body language that strikes you know the strike percentage and uh, it's it's been fun to watch and uh, fun to see our pitchers uh, be in attack mode out there too. How have you and, and your coaches been received out on the recruiting trail? Kind of getting back here into the southeast a little bit more and uh, picking up some new contacts, re you know, uh, meeting with some guys you'd known before. Yeah, it's it's been great. I mean, it, I think recruits are pretty fired up to see the the Tiger Paw and uh, you know want to be recruited by Clemson. Obviously, this is. Uh, you know, one of the blue bloods of college baseball and a traditional powerhouse. So I think everyone in this region is going to be interested. Um, it, you know, we'll, we'll at least be able to get our foot in the door. Um, so it's been a, a, a warm reception so far and uh, recruiting has gone really, really well. And um, yeah, don't, don't really see any reason why we can't compete to go after the best recruits in the country. And we have all the resources here to develop them as best as anyone in the country as well. Can you speak some about the freshmen and some guys that might be able to help you right away that are coming in? Yeah, um, quite a big freshman class. You know, we were able to add a few to to the class that was already in place. It was, I uh, forget what the class was ranked, 16th or 17th, but it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, well recognized. It was recognized, you know, as one of the, one of the top, um, recruiting class I think we can obviously do better as, as time goes on but um, there's a lot of talent in that freshman class a, a combination of, of good pitching good hitting speed some power um, just a good blend of, of what looks to be some pretty good athletes out there probably too early to tell we usually try not to put too much stock into the first few months of a freshman's fall just because they're you know getting acclimated to school and baseball and a new social setting and doing it all away from home but uh, some of these guys have acclimated quickly and now we're starting to see their baseball abilities really shine and uh, this, these next uh, five six weeks will be very telling and we're looking forward to evaluating that. As far as the way the draft unfolded uh, just kind of what were your thoughts any guys you were pleasantly surprised made it or any guys maybe you were hoping to get it that ended up leaving? Yeah, I think I think we all expected Brock Porter to sign, um, but it it got dicey there where we thought he he might come to school. But um, you know, so you know that that was obviously a um, a big time big time recruit and a tough loss for us. But we also had some players that had a lot of dialogue with professional baseball during the entire draft and even discussing financial terms. Uh, like Tristan Smith and Jack Crichton and Nolan Naraki and Joe Allen and Nate Hall, um, you know, and I'm sure there was someone else I'm leaving out, but they um, they all could have signed professionally had they dropped their their number that they would have signed for. So you know that's kind of the point that it's a very talented class with some guys that have high ceilings, and you know what they do between right now and. Um, over the next few years will determine that but uh, from just a skill set alone uh, the the high-end talent of, of this freshman class as well as the depth 
of the athleticism you know, seems to be very good. Everybody knows what Max Wagner did. Everybody, first name out here is Caden Grice, but you got a guy sitting right here beside you that puts together as good as uh, an at bat as anybody in the country. Doesn't mind going to left field. Doesn't mind going up the middle. Who Ryan Ammons? <laughs> hitting with uh, hitting with two strikes. How important is it to have a guy like that back here leading leading the way? Well, you know, Cooper's a you know we have we we value plate discipline and quality contact and consistent contact and. And Cooper is as, as good as anyone I've seen in college baseball yeah. at swinging at strikes and taking balls. He just makes very good decisions at the plate, and that leads to a lot of consistent hard contact because uh, he's very good when he swings the bat, the bat touches the ball, and a lot of times he squares it up pretty hard. So um, he's a very valuable piece of our offense. He's a table setter. He's a high on base percentage guy, and he's a guy who can, you know, he can, he can hit it through a shift. He can turn on it and hit it over the fence. I mean, he's just uh, he's a very, very polished, uh, good hitter. And so we'll lean on him uh, a lot and uh, be a great guy to have set in the table for us. Good time for two more. At what point will you get to see Will Taylor? Uh, well, I, I always hope that it's either uh, untouched to the end zone or a fair catch. Uh, uh, no, we'll see him after football season, but so excited for him and, and the success that he's having and the, you know, the opportunities that he's getting. He's a fantastic athlete, phenomenal athlete. Uh, but we, you know, we'll, we'll see him after football season, and uh, we'll be ready for, for him to make an impact onto the team as well. Coach Lee was obviously a, a, an offensive-minded coach. Um, played a little bit more small ball last year than, than he had historically. But how, how would you describe your, your coaching philosophy, your style, what you want to do out there, and how dependent is, is what you want to do on the personnel you have? I think as a coach, you have to tailor your schemes and your, your philosophies to you know the personnel you have. Luckily for us, we've got a lot of depth on the pitching mound. We like you know we like guys that can absolutely attack the strike zone, and with, with the pitching staff that we have, especially some of that veteran leadership that's back with Coach Bellinger, uh, that certainly looks to be a strength from an offensive standpoint. We love balance. We love the combination of speed and power. And uh, we certainly seem to have that with, uh, you know, just looking at the guys who are returning, that we're returning starters with the addition of a few. Uh, we'll be able to, looks like we'll be able to, to slug a little bit and we'll be able to, to steal some bases, go first to third, take some extra 90s, you know, utilize the speed a little bit component as well. Uh, bunting, you know, personally, we'll use it uh, if we need it late, not a, not a huge guy. Uh, to exercise small ball, especially going first to second. We'll do it more second to third, just to create more runs. But uh, we also don't believe in having nine independent contractors go up to the plate just trying to get their Twitter swing off. We believe in having a, a super run scoring team and guys that are connected and passing the baton and having quality at bats and one at bat connected to the next one. and. The base runners understanding that they have a job to do until they touch home plate, and the hitters understanding that they may need to move a guy over and get a guy in, and uh, and understand how that impacts plate decisions and the pitches that they go after. So we'll tailor this. Our offense will be about scoring runs, and the nine guys that go up to that plate will try to score as many runs as possible. All right, thank you, coach. Thank you, coach.